If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, especially when it comes to money. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we'll be learning more about Ponzi schemes and how to avoid them. What is a Ponzi scheme? How is it set up? A Ponzi scheme is, is basically one person benefiting from another person. And as soon as the first investor comes in, we'll only be able to reap a benefit because another investor comes in afterwards. The next investor to invest their money pays for the first person that comes out. It's also known as a pyramid scheme. The first person at the top of the pyramid makes all the money. The people at the bottom of the pyramid lose all their money. Is there ever a scenario where a Ponzi scheme might succeed or that it might be a good investment? A Ponzi is a scam. It, it's a con. The only way you can make money is if you've made it on the detriment of somebody else. So I would basically say, no, you should try to avoid these at all costs, no matter if you get in at the beginning or at the end. What kind of terminology is important to keep in mind when discussing this kind of fraud? If everybody knew it was a Ponzi scheme, they wouldn't be investing in the first place. But terminology that you can listen to to find out if it will become or it is a Ponzi scheme is people guaranteeing something that doesn't really make any sense, something better than what makes sense. If market rates are currently running 3-4%, somebody promises you 12 or 15 or more, asking you to invest quickly, asking you to put money in in an overseas account, make checks payable to the wrong part, anything that stands out from the normal you know, day-to-day -day activity that you usually see, often you ask, ask yourself some extra questions. And the more questions you ask, sooner or later somebody's going to sound uncomfortable and you're going to sort of get the idea that something wrong is going on. Now, in terms of the Bernie Madoff case, which is obviously a recent example of a Ponzi scheme, how was he able to get away with this for so long? When things are going well, when the markets are going up and so on, and you say, I'm going to get you a 10% rate of return, it's really easy to do when the markets are going up and the markets are going up and the markets are going up. There's more and more money coming in all the time. These Ponzi schemes just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And as soon as the market goes down and people try to take their money out and realize there's no money left in the particular scheme, the whole situation falls apart. What can we learn from the Madoff case? What signs might alert us to the fraud? Some of the wealthiest people in North America were invested in, obviously overseas at the same time, were invested with Bernie Madoff. People came in and said, you know, how could it be wrong? How could it be a fraud? How could it be anything? If these people are invested, obviously there's not any risk involved, but it just proves every single time, no matter how big or how small you are, you have to ask the right questions. And the right questions is, you know, actually safety. How safe is my investment? How can I get my capital out? And so on. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. Some of the things that people get caught in is the terminology gets too complicated. The terms, all the, the documentation, the prospectuses, the research, and they say, oh, somebody must have looked into it. Thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime.